Well, hello everyone. Hope you're well. So we're coming to the end of week three of uh, school closure. I hope you're still looking after yourselves and doing as much work as you possibly can. Um, and yeah, staying safe. So I thought as it's week three, I'd do my third assembly. Uh, this uh, week's assembly is uh, based on kindness and I'm just going to upload my uh, slides for you. Um, there's some important messages at the end as well, however, for regarding schoolwork and other bits and pieces. So, uh, but I'll talk a bit about kindness first of all. So I'm just going to bring this up. Should be coming up any second now. And uh, it starts really with uh, uh, my son's homework. So he is uh, in year seven in another school in Cornwall, down in West Cornwall. And he has been given a task as part of his English homework to uh, write speech. So it's part of the persuasive writing uh, section of their, their course and in year seven. And he has to write a speech uh, on uh, there. There it is on the screen there. Young people are too often and too easily blamed for society's problems. It is a lazy and damaging stereotype. So that's my son on the left there. Uh, he's with his best friend. I didn't have permission for his best friends uh, to show the, his best friend's photograph, so I gave him another face. Uh, but that's my son on the left there in year seven. So that's uh, his homework. So we've been doing some research and it's really quite interesting on how um, young people often perceived and portrayed uh, in, in the media and by the public. So uh, here's a, a Telegraph uh, uh, newspaper article um, about two years ago, you see the bottom, there's a headline there. I'll just bring up uh, easy to see on the screen here. Pub the public scared of children who behave like animals. So it's a survey done by a charity called Bernardo's. And the, the findings were actually really quite shocking. Um, people believing that children behave like animals and were, were a danger to, to the public and so on. Um, so here's some of the stats from that survey. Uh, there you go. Uh, just over a third say our streets are infested by young yobs. Um, over 50% think they're behaving like animals. Nearly 50% saying they're a danger. Um, and those surveyed thought that half of crime was caused by children. Now, as a young person, I don't know how that makes you feel. Um, if I were you, I'd probably feel really, really angry, uh, frustrated that, that people think of you in that way. Um, and I guess it's, it's not surprising when you get uh, newspaper articles like this one. Um, I don't know if you can see that teen gang bust underneath. It says tough new laws to tackle youth crime crisis. All right. So the youth crime is uh, just at breaking point by by all accounts. Um, and if you look into the newspaper stories over the last year, out of just over eight and a half thousand stories, more than half of them uh, sorry, about eight and a half thousand stories about teenagers, over half of them were about crime. And you can see there the most used words to, des to describe the teenagers was the word yobs or, or thugs. An actual fact, um, that, that piece of uh, people that did this research uh, actually showed also that when uh, teenagers were portrayed in a good light, it was generally after they died. So uh, referring to teenage boys as angels or model students, that sort of thing, but only because um, they, they, they come to the end of their life through an untimely death. Maybe they, they'd been at the, the end of a crime or they'd have been in a car accident or something, but there were, there were very few articles putting young people in a positive light. And I don't know if you've seen any of these around. This is a, a, a Mosquito MK4. It's an it's a anti-loitering device. What does that mean? Well, you, you might have seen them uh, at places outside like fast food restaurants like McDonald's or outside train stations, bus stations, that sort of thing. What they do is give off a really, really high pitched noise that only younger people can hear. So someone as old as me, um, my hearing range isn't as good as, as young people, so I, it means nothing to me. I don't hear anything, but um, it gives out a pitch that, that that's so high that the young people hear and it's really annoying. So it stops 
stops uh, young people from hanging around in certain areas. Um, for me, that's just really sad indictment of how people perceive young people and think that they would be a threat um, to society. Um, but what are the facts? Well, the facts are actually quite different to what is being portrayed. So if you just take a few of them, um, the amount of, amount of young people uh, abusing alcohol and drugs uh, is less than it than it has been. Uh, unwanted teenage pregnancies are, are less than they've ever been uh, since they've been recorded. Uh, the number of uh, young people getting first warnings or convictions uh, has dropped over the last 10 years. And interestingly, on a positive, the number of young people who are volunteering has increased by something around about 12%. So that's 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 a, a real positive. And I know we talk a lot about uh, young people on, on their phones and technology being bad and all that sort of thing. But there's a really interesting study in, in Boston in America about a year ago when uh, they sat outside a, a fast food restaurant, again, something like McDonald's, and they, they watched families as they ate their meals and they, they recorded how often people were on their phones. <clears throat> and interestingly, the adults were worse than the young people. So uh, I think it was something crazy, like a third of adults were uh, on their phone for their entire time they were in the restaurant. So it's not just young people on technology all the time and technology isn't always a bad thing. So the truth from my point of view about young people is that the vast majority are, of children are decent, they're enthusiastic, they're caring, kind and, and conscientious. And you've proved that to me uh, in the recent, recent weeks uh, by sending in uh, lots and lots of rainbow messages that we forwarded on to uh, Derriford Hospital now. And if you were one of those people, we got we got uh, almost 150. And if you if you were one of those people, thank you so much. We we uh, sent them off to Derriford yesterday and had a, a, a contact from one of their senior nurses last night. And she sent me this message here. I'm going to read it to you. It says, I've been nursing for many years. The last few weeks of my career have been the, been the hardest. I'm sitting on my bed at hospital accommodation, which is my home for the next six days with the posters your pupils sent to us. I've looked and read everyone. All I can say is what kind, lovely and very thoughtful pupils you have. I can assure you the staff will love them, but more importantly, they will without a doubt be a comfort to the patients. How wonderful is that? So those of you that, that sent those messages in, uh, you will be making a difference to some other people. And as a school, we've been doing our bit as well. Um, our technology department, uh, Mr. Yox, Mr. Herdwell, Mrs. Yoxall, Mrs. Ward, Mrs. Naismith have been coming into school uh, almost every day making uh, face visors for uh, local services, whether that's the district nurses in Liscard or Callington, um, loads of care homes. Uh, we've sent some up to Tavistock Hospital, over to Coventry Hospital even and uh, Lis Liscard Community Hospital is, is next on the list along with a few other uh, a few other people that, that need them. So uh, well done to them uh, for being showing their kindness and coming into school uh, when they didn't need to and, and doing their bit for, for society. And I also uh, set you a bit of a challenge uh, as well to see if you can uh, make a card for the wonderful Captain Tom who celebrates his 100th birthday on the 30th of April. All you need to do, make a card, take a picture of it, post it on any any uh, social media platform, uh, but use the hashtag make a card for Tom. All right. Uh, what a wonderful man. He's done some um, amazing things in the in the recent weeks and uh, we salute you, sir. So if you could do that, that'd be uh, fantastic. And my big challenge to you is new challenges just coming out uh, called the 2.6 challenge. All right. So you may be aware that obviously lots of charities are struggling at the minute because they're not getting the income they would normally normally get. One of the biggest, biggest events of the year to raise money for charities is the, the London Marathon, which should have been happening this Sunday. So uh, and that generates loads of money for, for charities. And so instead, what, what they've come up with is the 2.6 challenge. So from Sunday, we are going to be asking everybody to do something around the numbers 2.6 or 26 to fundraise and donate to the UK's charities. So what could you be doing? So things like, you know, learning to count to 26 in different languages, walking 2.6 kilometres inside your house, you know, walking up and down your stairs 
26 times or even to the height of 2.6 kilometers you know lots of different ideas there you might want to do things with your, your family uh, as well you might want to build a tower out of 26 objects you might do a 26 meter three-legged race around your house and so on and so on the the list is endless you just need a bit of creativity all right and come up with something all right and then make sure you can get some sponsorships on, from some of your friends or your uh, your family to help help raise some money for uh, local and national charities and what I really love is for you to send uh, any videos of you doing anything around around the 2.6 challenge to Mrs Riley or Mrs Rowe or you could upload it directly to uh, the PE Twitter account at Liscard underscore PE all right so there's your challenge show uh, your kindness all right and get some money for the, the charities that are struggling at the minute okay so a uh, few other things uh, I've sent you an email which you should have seen about a free opportunity to become a radio presenter if you want to learn how to broadcast all you have to do is uh, send an email to Pipewell Studios details are on the screen there but I have emailed you as well you do need permission from your mum and dad all right, they'll show you how to do it and then off you go. Record your own little radio show and then it'll get heard by as many people as you want it to get heard by uh, in like you get, in, in get published uh, or, or uh, accessed from anywhere in the world. OK, so have a look at that if you're interested. Um, home learning, I hope it's going well. Just a couple of things from me, really important uh, updates. So make sure, please make sure you should be doing around about two to three hours a day. If you're year 10 or 12, really should be a more than three hours rather than two hours. In addition to that, please be reading half an hour every day, and please be doing your exercise at least half an hour every day as well. All right, so if there's too much work for you to do, don't worry, if you don't complete it, that's not the end of the world. As long as you're making a commitment to do two to three hours a day, that is the most important thing. Don't forget, if you're stuck, you need help, please email your teachers. They're there to help you, all right? At the end of this week, as in at the end of today, I'm going to be contacting the teachers and asking them to record for me who's been engaging with the work and who, who hasn't. So I will be then following that up over the next week, uh, making a few phone calls to those who haven't really engaged in anything yet, okay? Uh, Mr. Nibes asked me to give you a reminder about GCSE Pod. I've had loads and loads of positive feedback from people using that, but a few of you uh, not been following instructions about how to get logged on. So the first time you log on to GCSE Pod, just go to the, where it says get started, go to new user. You have to type in your name, your date of birth, and then obviously the name of the school, and then you create your own username and password. Okay, so uh, I strongly urge it's something you, that's memorable. Why not use your school username and password? Then it's then it's one less one to remember. Okay, but it's a great resource there. I know lots of people are using it. Have been really positive about it. Um, we've had loads of people sending loads, uh, lots of pictures about what some of their work they've been done, uh, they've done, or um, them in action, if you like. Uh, we've got a section of the website where it's called Home Home Learning Showcase, and we're, we're putting up these photos here, uh, so it's showing some of the great work that people have been doing. Okay, so please keep them coming in. Love to love to see more of those as well. I'm hoping to get a reflection magazine out soon, and we'll take some of the best ones and put them in there uh, too. Okay, a um, couple of things about. Emotion, health and well-being, obviously uh, we need to make sure fundamentally you first and foremost you are well, both uh, physically and mentally. One thing that really, really, really helps uh, with your mental health and well-being is about having routine. OK, so we put example timetables up on the website. If you haven't seen it, have a look, please. You know, try to do some things, get up at the same time on Monday to Friday, then have your weekends uh, to do a, a bit more relaxation and get into a routine of when you're doing your schoolwork, you know, when you're having breakfast and so on and so on, because uh, it really does help with your, your mental health and well-being. If you need to talk to someone, please, loads of ways of doing that. Either you can email tutors or your head of year and they'll get back to you. Or if you uh, go to the I need to talk form on the website or the, the problem with people bullying you online, um, obviously you can report that on our online bullying report form as well both found on on the, the home page of the website 
There are loads of resources also on the website about um, advice and guide, giving you advice and guidance about uh, keeping mentally well as well. So please have a look at those. It's in the uh, student section of the website, right at the bottom, it says health and wellbeing. Uh, click on that and there's lots of things you can look at there. So, remind from me, two challenges, make a card for Tom if you can and obviously take part in the 2.6 challenge from Sunday onwards and send in your uh, videos, all right? Kindness is all around us, we see it everywhere in the minute, all right? Do your bit as well, all right? And let's put to bed those terrible headlines about children being, um, you know, the causing all society's problems. That is not the truth. You are a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group of people and you have so much to offer. And let's do our little bit in this current situation. OK, take care of yourselves. Keep washing those hands. Keep staying in and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.